What's up, YouTube? Uh, coming back, I wanted to actually move backwards before we move forwards from where we left off with the infamous Broccoli Monster. Um, we did start this guy after he had already been mounted and primed and cleaned. So I wanted to start from the very beginning because if you are new, there can be some hurdles that you probably are unaware of if you're new to miniature painting. So I ran down the hobby store, picked up this guy. Uh, another Reaper miniature. This is the Wizard Baharis Tenspire. Now, first thing you do if you are using a pewter metal miniature of any kind is check for any uh, casting tags. What you're looking for, you can probably kind of see it here, is there is a little tag of metal. Go over, pick those off, uh, look for any sharp points that you can find. There is a little bit of one here, and you just want to file those down. So, you know, obviously you don't want any sharp edges when you're handling miniatures. And you can use files, like the Citadel files, and I realize that is upside down. But the thing about those files is they're not really aggressive. You can actually go down to Home Depot or Lowe's, pick up a 99 cent file, and it'll be a lot more aggressive and quicker work to take these uh, tags down. And the other thing, you can really see it here on the base where there's this huge knob. And I'll actually take a Dremel tool to this and make quick work of it. And there's another little tag right there. But just clean it up, make it look nice. Uh, you can also look for, if you're doing Reaper Bones, excuse me, you can also clean it up by looking for any casting lines. Um, let's see if I have a bones. I don't actually have any bones. Or maybe I do. There is, here's a Reaper Bones. This is already primed. Uh, one of their bugbears, but you can kind of see I tried to clean it up as much as possible, but you can still see it. there's a slight casting line here But and again whether it's the synthetic Polymer material or the metal you can still use files on them and just clean it up a little bit And again that's at your own discretion It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect if you don't want it to be But going from here the next step you want to do after you clean this guy up is actually find an old toothbrush and take it to some warm water and dish soap and just scrub every nook and cranny of this guy really well and then rinse it off with water and let it dry. Uh, the reason you want to do that is that there is a film slick residue that is left over on the metal miniatures and actually the uh, polymer miniatures as well that is a release agent from when the casting is done. And that will cause your paint to not stick as well as it should. So make sure you clean those up really well and I'm gonna go do that right now and we'll pick up from there. All right, here we are. Uh, I just wanna give you a quick little example of how to blast this little tag off. And I know this is gonna be kinda of echoey, but we are in my surfboard shaping room. So just a quick Dremel. Uh, please remember whenever you use power tools always wear eye protection but just a quick blast with this guy and we'll get that off and then we'll go and wash and scrub them. All right, made sure that we got that nice and flat but this actually did leave a little bit of a sharp edge here. Uh, on the entire base all the way around. And I want to take that down. So I will grab a piece of scrap sandpaper and take that edge down. And also just found another little tag there. But it doesn't take a lot of effort. Like I said before, pewter is a really soft metal. pretty well. Now we'll go clean it real fast and we'll talk about primer. 
All right, so we got this guy pretty cleaned up. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is that when you do clean this, you'll actually notice a change in the hue of the metal. It'll have a duller sheen to it. It's not quite as shiny and bright. And I know it's another step to get that residue off of there, and I'm sure a lot of people are gonna say, well, it doesn't seem like it has that much residue on it. Clean it first, and then ask yourself how much residue it has on it, because you will notice a very huge difference. Um, now, this is not dried, it's still pretty wet. Now, I would normally say just let this sit on your shelf or countertop, let it air dry, because water will recess into all the little crooks and crannies. But, since I have my compressor and I have my paint gun hooked up to it, just gonna give it a quick blast and it's dry enough. And now we're ready to move to primer. There. So, about primer, um, there's a lot of different ways that you can prime a miniature. I prefer to use, again, game color. Uh, normally you just brush this on. It's a pretty thick primer and you can do it in you know a few coats. I use an airbrush and I actually just thin it down with water. The reason I don't like the rattle can primer is that it has a tendency to pool really easily and you will lose all the minute detail that the artist put into carving this thing. So I like to use an airbrush and let me get my coffee out of the way. So you just take this guy and do it in short bursts. If you actually have an airbrush and you have access to this, uh, just nice short little first tool. Make sure our paint's coming out. And it does not take a lot. But I find that airbrushing really holds the detail. Uh, you can prime it and it's still pretty discernible as far as the details. And again, looks like I used a little too much water in here, so I'm actually going to blast this with some air for a second. And yeah, that's way too wet. You turn down, and that's too splattery, and like Goldilocks, that's just right. The other thing about airbrushing this on is it actually dries really quick because the air atomizes the paint very quickly. And again, just like we talked about before with the Broccoli Monster, you don't want thick paint. Thin layers. Nice and thin. And let that dry for a sec. And I'll finish primering this and we'll take it back to the desk. All right, um, I realized after I was letting this dry, I, I wanted to speed up the process by just blasting it with air. I've removed the canister with the primer in it and I'm just using the airbrush. And I was hoping that I could capture this on video because if you'll notice, if I hit this with air, you can see, it, you can see the pools moving around. Uh, this really gotten into those recesses. And that's what I wanted to show you guys is that every bit of paint that gets down in there takes away from the detail. So again, just can't put enough emphasis on it. Use really thin layers. Okay, now that we're back at the table and I've gotten this guy primed, I just want to go over one more thing about primer before we move back to the Broccoli Monster is uh, the difference between white primer and black primer. Uh, you will notice that a lot of people, please excuse my dog. You will notice that a lot of people uh, tend to go with the black. And again, uh, just restating what I went over in my previous video about working from light to dark and which is what you usually do when painting, is that a lot of miniature 
painters do the opposite and they work from dark to light. Um, now, if you're looking for a quick paint job, absolutely use the black because what that does is that gives you your shadows. It provides a base layer where is it now if I'm painting this guy with a white primer base it's going to take me more layers of paint to get that color to pop um, as opposed to a black primer if you're painting you know red over black you're gonna get a darker shade of red than you would get on almost you know pinkish lighter side hue of red as a painting on a white primer base so Again, I prefer the white primer. I'm actually really excited about painting this guy. He's got a lot of fun stuff going on. And definitely, you know, there's even a little gecko right there. How impressive. Uh, really excited to paint this guy. But for now, we'll just stick to our broccoli monster and just some basic painting. And we'll move on from there. And we're back. So. Working on Mr. Broccoli Monster again. Uh, we're just going to step up a couple shades. So again, just building thin layers. We're going to use some Escorpina Green by Game Color and some Beastly Brown. And again, it, uh, just thin layers. It does not take a lot of this paint to get done what you want to get done so just tiny drops literally just like a small not even a pea sized dab of paint use about the size of a BB and then if you need a painting rag I really really recommend old t-shirts cut them up little squares they work fantastically well so Again, this is just barely a shade darker than the green that we were using before. And I'm going to do the underside just to hopefully add a little three-dimensional texture. So we'll have, obviously, light on top, dark on the bottom. And always ask yourself questions when you're painting uh, whether it's miniatures or maybe you're painting a live subject um, anything in art ask yourself questions as far as where are shadows um, where would the darker colors logically be in contrast to the lighter colors obviously on this guide since it's the under on this guy it's the underside so I'm gonna go a little darker here and we'll do the same thing with the brown and again just thin little layers and if you really want to get into painting especially if you're painting a little tree broccoli monster like I am you can invoke your inner Bob Ross and just paint a happy little tree although this guy not happy he's uh, got a bone to pick with somebody and actually, I think that's about all the green I want to put on there for now. Uh, again, I just want nice thin layers, so I'm going to move over to the brown. And one thing uh, I remember to mention is that when you're getting into this, oh, that's really dark. One sec. I'm going to water that down really fast. So if you see how dark that got on there, so I'm going to water it down and hopefully, and you just dab it away. And got his underside armpit there as well. But hey, maybe that arm's casting a shadow there. And obviously his feet would be dark as opposed to the rest of his body. Um, but as I was saying before, when you get started in this, you know, do yourself a favor, don't, <laughs> do not glue it to the base that it's meant to be on before you paint it. Uh, as you can see, this, this was actually one of the first minis I bought. Um, I skip around a lot and tend to 
get different ones but if you can set it up to where it's like this main reason being that when especially with the metal miniatures is that when you prime them every time you touch them you will probably rub off the primer you might be able to see right there you have some bare pewter under there where the primer is rubbed off just from handling so if you can set this up uh, I don't like to cut the metal base off so I actually took this was a just a dowel I had hanging out in my garage that was used for nothing so I took this to my table saw and just cut a shallow gap into there and then I use rubber cement to place that on there and that way it can come off relatively easy once I'm done and I want to put it on its base <clears throat> I also have just bare dowels you can see where if uh, I'm working on the bone series I'll just glue that to the top okay uh, coming back sorry about that I had a little coughing break still working on this cold uh, so again and this actually might be a little bit of a shade darker than I want it um, it is applying pretty dark on there um, and one thing to be aware of with any painting you do paint will always dry darker than it appears when wet when you're applying it so that's one thing to be aware of and I'm just kind of really watering this down and doing a a wash if you will maybe I'll just throw some up in there obviously maybe darker underneath is hair underneath is uh oh, what you call that okay so you can see you just did some really thin layers uh added some dark which was uh, maybe have been a bit too dark as far as the brown is concerned the green looks good i'm happy with that um it is coming along how i want it to up there i can adjust this as far as the how much contrast is there is between the light and the dark uh, i still kept the brown thin enough the darker brown thin enough to where it's not a problem um, got the shadows in the appropriate places and let this dry and we will come back to it and hopefully you guys are learning something so please uh, like subscribe and take care